Did they start naming their cards after like Guar members? Come yeah. on. Come on. You you would buy I would buy one I, if they even had a Guar special edition. Yeah, absolutely. Hundred percent. It like spews Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin in an orange shirt. That's Jordan in a not orange shirt, but no squirrels. And in the wavy, confusing shirt over there, and that is one Pedro Mateus. Get over the U chat room dynamic. Jordan is live, helping us for. You know him, you love him. Cocaine. Voltron. Two gains. I don't care how long you chew on it, YouTube. I assume this is what YouTube does each and every week. Or every <laughs> other week when it just locks up um trying to figure out is this can we monetize this or not I'm like i don't care is, just, is, is linux gamecast for kids do you want to market for children no, for I, I do that i'm like no and it, it looks at the accuracy when i upload these videos right and it says all right what do you have and i'm like yeah we're a wee cussy which is an appropriate language i'm like boom boom and it gives you the ratings like you have excellent ratings i'm like that's awesome we'll go ahead and do the monetization you get done with that it gets done processing that it can spend anywhere from 30 minutes to six hours in like checking content. Like you just said that you trust. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. There, there's, there's no trust in computer land, Ven. No, <laughs> there is not. How about squirrel land, baby? Squirrel land, squirrel land is now squirrel free land. Um, there, <laughs> we finally got animal control in, uh, appar- apparently the, the squirrel we got is like the fucking John McClane of squirrels. Cause it hissed at the guy when he tried to fish him out. Um, well, now but, that I know it's gone, because when you first saw what you can't see right now is the tissue paper back there. <laughs> and to- here, Toilet paper. Okay. He, here's what I didn't want to spoil. I'm like, man, there's a higher than none zero chance of that squirrel chewing. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, if it like fucking xenomorph through. That right. Would, so, like, um, th- that's that's the thing, though. Like, the squirrel originally came out in a meeting when I was on a call uh, at, at work. <laughs> and, like... And like one of my coworkers was backing me up when I was explaining it to someone. I was like, "No, absolutely! I saw the squirrel ran past the fucking webcam." Yeah, but it's gone now. It's it's not a problem anymore, and I can finally die in peace. <laughs> well played, well played. At least you were able to track down the squirrel man. He came back. Yeah. Squirrel, yeah, he, he fucking forgot where I lived, which is <laughs> troubling. But you know, you know what? It's it's done. Don't worry about it. And you had a legitimate reason to post an XKCD comment. I did, week, I, I, I did compiling code man just just man it's it's not compiling code anymore it's running npm install that mm. shit just fucking takes a week pulling all of the dependency <laughs> you never yeah. get away from that comic and no matter what part of your where you've moved your interest because yeah i compile stuff occasionally but more in my life it's rendering is where yeah. that comments change like ah shut yeah. up i'm rendering and, I, um, I'm I'm babysitting this thing while it while it finishes. I have right. literally nothing else to do until it done. It's done, I can't watch so. it. If you do that, it won't finish. Something bad to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I've been doing uh, another week of unnecessary knowledge and learning about threaded IRQs because I'm trying to get the last bits for this Army AIO Pro to finish up the interfacing Linux. I sequestered myself in this room yesterday and like you need to write the entire script, which is like seven thousand words. Basically, what I said is I fucked off on Reddit. Most of Friday. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, my, my, my writing process. Cool. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was like, this is like work. I don't like writing. And, but you need to write these things, at least a very good rough outline of these things. Or you just end up with like rambly ass videos, which I'm not a fan of. I'm like, oh, look, here's it. So let me tell you about my day. It started right now. <laughs> and so I tied an onion on my belt because it right. was the style at the time. Uh, so I did that. That was entertaining. And, uh, yeah, pre pre super shows and we're, we're still tracking things down and man, if that fixed it. Grr. How about you, Pedro Mateus? Well, um, there was something that happened around this time. Uh well, it was actually. It's Pedro's birthday, here. everybody. <laughs> wish him a happy birthday. He's <laughs> Happy Womb Liberation Day, Pedro. Yeah, uh, you're gonna about, die soon. Um, you're gonna die one year sooner. Six years ago. 36 uh, <laughs> years ago, as is tradition, I would just like to say better luck next time, birthday. I'm still rooting for you. So, yeah, no, the one of these skeleton. days I will hit puberty. So, you know, look forward to that. <laughs> oh, the, the, the ladies are going to have to watch out. He's just going to get all his all his hair coming in. He's going to be like yeah. sexual. No, this all of my hair, uh, chest hair. That's you can't grow hair on steel. <laughs> um, 
You know what? Honestly, I thought you'd be a lot more bolder by now, but you're not, which is good. I, I mean, it, it's it's all it's all like party in the front, like baldy in the back. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Uh, it mm-hmm. is. Uh, I mean, my hair is thin, always has been. Uh, but yeah, no, like my hairline is still very much where it always has been. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> Jordan's hair is going to be permanent because Jordan's convinced that all of his will fall out. I mean, if, if li- liter- literally all the other men in my family, that seems to be the case. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I, I might be, I might be the one exception here. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm the low testosterone one of the family. Who knows? Dude, I, I'm sitting back waiting for an excuse to shave my. I'm like, ah. Do you, do you, do you, do you know if you're like a lumpel skull, uh, lumpel stilt skin, or if you have like a relatively smooth skull? I have no idea. I've had long hair since I was a child, no. and it's not for any other reason. I'm just too lazy to keep it. Like that's uh, yeah. A, yeah, yeah, but like, that, that, that's always the risk though, because like some people have like some really unfortunate shaped heads. Oh, I, I live oh, whatever. I mean, I had yeah, short but, but, hair when I was a kid, so I think it's relative. No one ever commented on it, so I think if, it's relatively if, round. If, if I end if, up with like you, a lumpy head, I'll just I get sharpies, man. I'll draw a smiley face or something to just. No, 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 you, you, you just look like a you just look like the top of a Ferengi from like from like overhead. <laughs> What what is it? What was that called? Phrenology or something like that? Phrenology, Phrenology. where they like yeah, where they yeah. like measure your skull to see if you're a murderer or some shit. <laughs> you know, we should try that on the horse. See if it's Probably. a serial killer. Um, <laughs> nay, <laughs> nay, it is the supreme serial killer. It's the steam. <laughs> oh. Windex. Windex yeah. sounds like a cleaning product, but. I don't know. Maybe maybe a cleaning product on a different type of site. Uh, Valve might, nay, they could be ready to optimize SteamOS for, drumroll, GPD WinMax 2, the gaming handheld. This comes from TechSpot. We got a couple of bits. Uh, links will be in the show notes. I, this is like a confirmed maybe. Because you look at this. Here's what went down. Valve contacted um, this lot in March of this year. They're like, hey, man. We wouldn't mind giving you a hand with Steam OS. And if I was like, you need to send us one of these new boxes, one of these GPDs uh, with a 6800 U in it. Let us test with it. Let us tinker. And it'll probably take about six months, half year. And Valve even offered to promote the One Max 2 on the Steam store if this goes through and takes place. So I get it. I understand that because Valve wants as many portable stores floating around in the wild as possible. Yeah, <laughs> Valve it, wants it, more people on their platform. Go figure. <laughs> I mean, I, I I like the idea of more computer shipping SteamOS, and I I really I really like this idea where like you know SteamOS has pretty as so far it's proven itself as like a pretty decent uh, platform for gaming on the go, and you know if other companies want a more mobile tailored option for their handhelds. Maybe maybe SteamOS is something that would fit them. I also just like the idea of a future where Windows isn't just necessarily the default for uh, gaming. Mm-hmm. Like yes. that, I'm, I'm I'm excited for Steam on Chrome OS because it's like, hey, yeah, it sounds like a fucking joke, but now you can buy a gaming computer or a computer that can play games that isn't running Windows, and there are yeah. many options. Or if you now. got a Chromebook from school for free, you can install Steam and play your games there. It's yeah no the the thing that stuck out to me was GPD. You remember GPD earlier this year? Yes, <laughs> the company that uh, was attempting to besmirch the deck by releasing a comparative benchmark was that was done man. at fourteen forty p. You know that resolution that neither the GPD uh, Win three or the Steam Deck support. So. Good job. Uh, also, one of the developers, I think it was last year, August of last year, had some incendiary comments about uh, SteamOS specifically. Someone is eating some crow right now. <laughs> For all we know, they outsourced their benchmarking to Intel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Stop spoiling the news segment. Then. No, Come okay. Well, what do you think? Uh, all you have to do is send your portable to Valve and you get some level SteamOS. So, what I'm saying, Nintendo. Fuck with them a little bit. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> what, send, what, send, what, send them an NVIDIA platform? Oh, man. That's, <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> well, you know, you know, uh, there are there are more stuff. There's more, some more stuff that you can uh, run on your Steam Deck now via Proton. 
with the new experimental release that came out as of uh, the 15th of July. Um, so uh, you got to be on NVIDIA 510 or Mesa 22 Plus if you want DX12 on experimental going forward. We'll talk a little bit more about why in the new segment. But, you know, there's a couple things. You have to check the diff for the change log because it doesn't really tell you what's been added. Uh, the MFX, uh, the MF. DXGI hack got removed because it looks like they have solved the root of the problem with a bunch of games um, having image corruption. So they've removed a bunch of uh, games that are applying this hack from that list. So that's always nice. Um, Warframe's launcher got fixed and Assassin's Creed Origin or Ass Creed O as I put in the uh, <laughs> notes uh, stopped hanging and uh, LeChuck's Revenge is no longer thwarted. So you can play some Monkey Island on your Steam. I, um, I, I tested out Assassin's Creed. And it does work, but you're immediately reminded of uh, like a little over halfway through the game because this Assassin's Creed was initially designed from the ground up to extract money from players. It's right. For whatever yeah. reason, um, Ubisoft was like, okay, we'll pull that up. But it still has, I'm just in like a perpetual fuck box. I'm like, I don't care enough anymore to deal with this. How about yeah, you, Pedro? You, you got a grind. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the thing that stuck out to me was, um, the experimental regression. I did a control F regression. There's four instances of uh, the word regression showing up on the this particular branch of Proton Experimental. I don't think I'd ever seen that before. It it, it has appeared that before. I just didn't remember it. But yeah, it, it, it's especially prominent now. The um the other thing that I noticed was that they've actually removed a bunch of the targeted hacks that they had yeah, in some games that, that required that the, MF the platform. Uh, MF DXG, I, yeah. I mentioned. Yeah. And uh, if you worry, uh, if you're playing, if you're playing something like rust or the long dark trail maker, surviving the aftermath, uh, Gloomhaven, there's a few others. Uh, the list is there. If you just click on the little mm -hmm. link that they have, uh, the one that still wasn't removed, which is one that I'm actively playing on the Steam Deck, go figure, is uh, Outward Definitive Edition. That one still requires the uh, MF Blatt hack for the uh, time being. <laughs> moving on to something that I kind of know a little bit about, because wait a minute, uh, I'm looking at the No, screenshot. this is the old one. <laughs> this, uh, this, this, this old one. This, this is like some Star Wars Battlefront shit. Yeah, okay, hang on. Uh, get, uh, to, uh, to finish the thought I was leading into before I was just kicked in the junk. Um, <laughs> I rolled a critical hit. I was going to roll uh, is that supposed to be a draw or yeah? Just yes, yeah. She's a she's a dark elf. Um, back when they were blue and slightly more racist than the current uh, the current mm -hmm. uh, interpretation <laughs> of them. Uh, but yeah, uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance Two, not to be confused with Dark Alliance. No, this is an actual like good game. I actually like the first one a little better than the second one. But you know, this one was still all right. Um, I remember uh, I remember playing this on the PlayStation Two back in I want to say two thousand five ish. My memory is yeah, little 2005 hazed. or six, something. Yeah. Like that. Some of this would have looked pretty like tight. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and like and it had, again, it was a multiplayer hack and slash. You can play as Drizzle and Artemis in this uh, if you beat the mm -hmm. main campaign, which is always cool. Um, the new version uh, that's coming out is a bit of a remaster. It's updated for uh, modern operating systems, but couch co-op only. But again, to be fair, that was also the case, you know, 20 odd years ago when <laughs> the game came out. So it's not, it's not like, how, how dare they not add online multiplayer? However, though, I will say, how dare you not add online multiplayer to this <laughs> fucking 20 year old game? Come on, people. It's, it's fucking 2022. Yeah, that, I I still want the uh, the first the actual first Dark Alliance uh, to drop in price because they released it at thirty pounds, which I'm pretty sure too, was actually much. the MSRP back in uh, 2003 or 2004 that it first came out. Uh, so that's at least come down a little bit. But I'm totally buying that and uh, Dark Alliance too. I I, lo I I love those games on the PS2. I did. <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll do like a bundle, like uh, like for yeah. one of the Steam sales. And you can grab Pedro. Both just people. close your eyes and pretend it's a 15 year old laptop. <laughs> I mean, just pull out your PlayStation. I don't need to close my eyes. I can just I'm look over there. I'm not wrong. <laughs> um, one of the <laughs> things. Uh, this is going to be 64 bit only. I like this though. I'm checking out these system requirements. Check this out. Uh, they have just straight. Up, here's the packages. Make sure you get this shit installed. I'm like, well done, well played. Mm, yep. I like to see that. Um, Most of those are um, Steam uh, requirements. So as long as you're running the natively installed Steam, you should be okay. <laughs> just you, just be on soldier. Yeah, you'll be, you'll be there's a will, there's a way to fuck something like that up, man. I mean, Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Pro Proton tricks, baby. So uh, we're back on our 
our ever quest to find a good miniaturized RC racing game that is like the one Pedro played a billion years ago. Yeah. Volt. <laughs> Revolt. Uh, Revolt Rock, was pretty good. Rocket yeah, League? It, it is. Uh, there was like a thing in the early 2Ks with RC racing games that were really good. Revolt, uh, that, that one's actually from 99, but close enough. Uh, the uh, All of the different ones that have showed up, kind of like Crazy Wheels here, they've been actually much closer to the most recent Hot Wheels game. It This one, it, if you're looking at the video, like the actual gameplay bits... Yeah, that that that's someone going. Ooh, this is the Hot Wheels game, but on a budget, and I'm okay with that, as long as there's online multiplayer, which they have online PvP, uh, and it's only partial controller support. I'm not entirely sure what they mean by that, but it is it's there. So that 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 may be worth a shot. Actually, I oh, I, yeah, I, I, I tried to it, find their um, email it address. Just means the only but, the A button works. <laughs> probably, <laughs> and, 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 uh, like and the left the, arrow. Uh, yeah, the start is mapped to like L1 or R1. Yeah, it, 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 accelerate is like L3 or something. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I like this about the game. Crazy Wheels Fast Pace. Um, over a decade ago, I was in the Virgin Mega Store in London with my family looking through the stores, aisles, micro machines, V2 turbo machines. So, yeah, like I like that. Uh, this is like something he's always kind of wanted to put together and do. So, uh, I will just be blunt about this. Uh, it's. 30% off, it's regularly $14.99 when you get an online game. I mean, if you if you have a really tight single-player experience, you're fine with doing that. But, like, I know Steam 4-packs are not technically a thing anymore, but have a good sale. We could definitely pick up, because if we're going to buy a multiplayer game and a racing game, we're going to be buying, like, 8 or 10 copies to yeah. kind of I want to get as that. many people in as possible. <laughs> right, and I want to find out things like, can I do my own server, or do I got to rely on a server that will eventually get shut down? What version of my sequel does it need to run? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, best of luck with everything. I look forward to playing it. Maybe it'll pass uh, Pedro's um, plus seal of perplusal. I've, uh, perplusal. I've looked for emails. It's Chimera Games, you, your website, it needs some work. Literally. Uh, <laughs> what about their uh, Twitter account? Would, would, would you rather they put the effort I into the website him, or the game? I shot him a tweet as well. No uh-huh. reply. <laughs> Maybe they don't like you. Probably. <laughs> Although I don't think I ever uh, contacted them before. They This is the first game that they've released on Steam. So... I don't know. you got to imagine <laughs> anybody releasing a game on Steam, even if it is like, hey, look, this is like legit, no joke, prick simulator thing, and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> they probably get inundated with... yeah. Probably. Like key request <laughs> from bots and whatever and all that. So I other understand. people named Pedro Mateus. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do send some people emails, yes. I mean it doesn't help that I have the real Pedro Mateus at LinuxGameCast.com and I send out a lot of emails on that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. I'm just keep you on your toes, man. Uh <laughs> We talked about this last year. It's been a year, and I wanted to like look into this game. All throughout this year, but I couldn't remember. And I know it kind of brought it up, but I had some vagary. Uh, it was like, oh, you guys remember that one that looked a lot like Hollow Knight with the numbers filed off? And like, I think we all remembered it, but yeah. we couldn't find it. We talked about it in the show when it was initially announced on Steam. I'm like, this looks a lot like Hollow Knight. And um, turns out there's a good reason. What are we talking about? Uh, there's a bit of an update for Crownsworn. Check this out. They got a new Crowsworn. trailer. Crownsworn. I keep reading it. Crownsworn. I keep reading it as Crown Sworn too, but it's Crow Sworn. I call it what it is. This, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, is uh, 2D Helsing Night. Yeah, that's, that, it, yeah, that, that's that, the that, Mallard that's card. That's just Castlevania. Yeah. It's even more Castlevania than uh, Hollow Knight. Kota, yeah. Kota Hirano <laughs> is going to sue somebody, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> hey, I, which I'm 100% not the suing part, being able to play my 2D Helsing game because uh, it looks really well done. It looks like it's borrowing a lot from Hollow Knight with the mechanics and, you know, uh, just the art style in general. Good reason for that. Like, half the team from Hollow Knight worked on this game, so... Okay, yeah. yeah. The actual legitimate reason for that to happen. Cool. That's, yeah. And, right. and, and, and I mean, like, if you're if you're going to plagiarize, at least plagiarize good shit, right? Well, yeah. I mean, even when we're looking at things like the health, uh, like, yeah, we know how to make one of those. I made one of those for Hollow Knight, and so we'll do it like that, which is good, because you know what? If you're going to crib off your past work, you're not you doing a bad stuff. job. 
Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> I think Hollow Knight's a great place to start. Uh, yeah. Still no um, ETA. Come, coming soon, TM. Coming yes. soon. <laughs> which, you know, so is a Hornet with the Hollow Knights, but um, I want to play this, too. I, he, okay, Team Cherry and uh, Mongo's Rodeo, don't you fucking dare will release these games within a month of, month of each other, all right? <laughs> they're they're going to release them the same day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't do it, because I will burn 50 hours in each one. Yeah, come on, come on. I mean... Yeah, the, we, we, the, we just come back like next week, and Ven is just like full fucking Robin Williams and Jumanji oh, mode with like the beard. <laughs> what I, year is it? I, I had a good time watching... Um, is it it me or it's me JP? It it, it me. It me JP it me. on Twitch. He's been playing through all the night, and the game is a completely different game at this point from my initial playthrough when like we played it like day one when Team Cherry put it out. And I mean, it's evolved and there's new bosses and characters and but all there's, that. Yeah, there's like full games worth of DLC that got released for free. There is so. and, like they they fleshed out things like the, the areas that were mysteriously absent of bosses, like the hive area and like the map's huge now. And you get new abilities like the soul sword and you can put, I go, I'm looking forward to, you know, retirement, retirement in the home. So I'm going to play through it again, but it was fun watching somebody for the first time go through it, get all the way up to the mantra, mantra, uh, mantis lords and just getting wrecked as is tradition. <laughs> that, <Yeah. laughs> that I love that part because at that point, even to get to that, you got to get good. Like you, you get your shit together. You're flying around, you're doing it and you hit that and you're like, up. Oh, there's a new hockey stick. The aristocrats. That's all I got, Jordan. Tell me about Armello. Armello. Ah, well, you know, it's 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 time to take out those bagpipes and start playing Amazing Grace. We knew this was coming, and it's finally here. Version 2.2 crossplay is now live. What does that mean for Linux users? Get fucked, assholes. Um, Wait, no, yeah. that's bad. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Very, very bad. So uh Le- League of Geeks, uh they they have uh, they announced a while ago. Um, you know, they they were having some network maintenance they were doing. They're upgrading the multiplayer infrastructure for Armello. And their multiplayer provider, uh, the third party one that they're using, um, no longer supports crossplay on Mac OS and Linux. So unfortunately, uh, you're not going to be able to play this game with other people, mm-hmm. natively at least. You could still play it via Proton. This sounds a little buggy there, um, but you. But uh, here's the thing: uh, they are offering refunds. I can't get one because someone bought me a copy of the game. I think it was the Sildat. Thanks a lot. Um, and it, you know, it ma- it makes me sad to to give League of, De- League of Geeks the 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 double piece amongst worlds mm-hmm. after all these years because like. Armello is like genuinely a very good game. Uh, it's a very fun game, solid board game, a lot of good streams, lots of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Um, but then they go do some stupid bullshit like this. I gotta, I, I gotta say, like, if you have a multiplayer provider that suddenly drops platforms, you should probably find a new multiplayer provider because that's two how you them. get a bu- <laughs> yeah that, two platforms. That, are- well, yeah. I mean, I, you try to empathize a little bit. You look at these guys. I mean, a they've did provide support for this game up till like what seven years after yeah. release so they got that i mean just reading through what they've gone through if you take you know spit it through the deep old shitter tron 9000 is yeah the, their existing multiplayer uh host just kind of nope they're like nope we're changing you gotta do this and they went into that and this is clearly the networking back end is not their strong suit and their development no. team like, yeah they, the, the, they bought it yeah yeah there's someone else doing it <laughs> And uh, just going by, you know, the discussions on Steam, like, yeah, they're still having problems even with this new system. So do keep that in mind. But what I didn't know is the Steam originally had a DRM free version. Hmm. Yeah, you could buy it on GOG and still play, but they've discontinued support of that in 2016. I just thought that was interesting to throw in there. And yeah, multiplayer is not doing great right now uh yeah. hopefully they get it sorted out it'd be great if you just let people host Ugh, again sorry to keep banging on this man let us run our own servers Medicated there's a reason servers it's not, not that hard come on there used to be a time like early 2000s again it was like the golden age of gaming uh the that every single game that had a multiplayer component would give people the binaries for running their own dedicated server just about every multiplayer game did that can we please have that again? And yeah, no, if you bought Armello because you wanted to play Linux multiplayer with your Windows friends and your everywhere else friends, 
you should absolutely ask for a refund. Uh, it, unless you're going to actively keep playing it with Proton, you should take your money back and send the message that this is not okay. It, it's good on them that they're offering the refunds. That's like I 100% support it. And all of the game companies who do end up put in this situation should absolutely do it. Not all of them do, but they should. Well, so, I mean, you got to look so, at the calculations. They did the back of the <laughs> napkin math on that. And they're like, if every single Linux user uh, requests, <laughs> yeah, we're good. Go, yeah. <laughs> it was like 10 of them and they're all in our Discord. <laughs> and, 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 and so, so part of the reasons why, like, um, and then, and we, we we can talk about like the the direction that gaming as an industry has moved, but like De- and Ar- Armello certainly by 2016 was adopting more of a live service thing. They had like uh, they had like dice and shit that you in cosmetics that you could buy on their store and so on and so forth. So yeah, like it makes sense that they wouldn't necessarily want to put out dedicated servers when they have shit like this. But maybe maybe that's not a very good way to make a sustainable game that people will play for a long time. Unity yeah. CEO, but we'll get to that <laughs> coming up next, I guess. Oh sure. boy. Yeah. yeah. Also, also video cards from Intel. Let's talk yeah. about them. It is my own personal fantasy that if someone ever gets an earworm, that's all Linux game cast quips. Uh, that's uh Yeah. That'd get do, me off, but <laughs> do we do we have an LGC dubstep remix? <laughs> no, I don't, yeah, I don't think so. Not that I've ever seen one. If uh, someone has, it's even more obscure than uh, LGC itself. I don't. I don't even joke about that stuff, man. I was uh, <laughs> EQing some stuff in the uh, like two weeks ago, no, about three weeks ago, when I ran across something Jordan said that when I just bounced it back, like you know, a second, and it's like, <laughs> oh. That's got a beat to it. I'm like, nope, get rid of it. Get rid of it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you know, kind of so, like so, everybody that supports the show. Yeah, you know, if you if you if you want to fund the LGC dubstep album that we make ourselves, because you know we're gonna we're gonna Thanos this. It's fuck it, we'll do it ourselves. <laughs> Head on over to patreoncom slash Gamecast and give us those infinity gems. Uh, become a Patreon. You can get access to a bunch of cool stuff like our Discord channel, uh, which you can also get by subbing to us on Twitch, twitchtv slash Gamecast. You get some cool. Um, in the Discord channel, you can chat with us the other six days of the week. We're there all the time, talking bullshit, talking about system administration and yeah that's that's kind of it start it goes, it goes places. you ever try to explain our discord to somebody I'm like so what are you into yeah uh, yeah about 2 p.m yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> no no, no that, uh, before 11 before 11 on that one yeah um but uh you can also get access to the pre-pre super shows and that is an extra hour of content that we put out it's basically just our sound check but we we talk about shit we talk about gin and squirrels and wish granting squirrels and you know squirrels what that you can squirrel? and and squirrels that you could like unscrew the heads of and like drink the contents of and get completely shit faced on <laughs> is it by three or by squirrel gen three by squirrel or a squirrel by wait <laughs> uh, no you need some squirrel bifurcation yeah um <laughs> and and any anywho um <laughs> That's Patreon. dark, man. Uh, animal <laughs> controls weird in Canada. It it is. Uh, we we got we got a store as well with clothing 100 percent not made out of squirrel. Not tested. No, tested on animals. I don't think we can claim that. <laughs> I don't I, think I don't we know. can claim it's 100 percent squirrel free. <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 it's definitely 97 percent squirrel free. I can make that claim. Uh, but yeah, start out Linux team cast up. Come buy some shirts, buy some stickers, buy a coffee mug. Support the show. Um, hell, Karen Fukuhara says that we're her favorite Linux gaming <laughs> podcast. So that you know, was beautiful, Rohit. That there, was there, truly there, magnificent. There, there, there oh, you go. great. Good luck. Now you got a vamp long enough for me to um, <laughs> find that. Right. Like, uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. <laughs> well, we got we got to thank uh, we got to thank Rohit for you know re- repping us with the with the boys. Yes. We also got to thank uh, the people who have been supporting the show, like Amir, who's been a there thirty three uh, month resub. I like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, look at it. It's, it's Kim. It's Kimiko or or, or Glimmer from Kimiko from the boys Shira. and Rohit if you rocking the Linux Gamecast T shirt. The Linux Gamecast marketing department on the left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Truly and, magnificent. And it's, it's a brilliant yep. shirt to anger and confuse people. Like, what the fuck is that? And you can look at them and be perfectly honest. Go, you don't want to know. The, a <laughs> thought occurred in the back of my head that, like, the boys films in Toronto, if Karen Fukuhara ever recognizes me, I'll be like, I'll have to run. I'll just run <laughs> down the street. Are like, you, 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 you going to, like, squee for a moment and fall over thud? <laughs> No, no, no! It's like, wait a second! I reckon you recognize you from that guy's T-shirt. 
Shit. Fuck. Get out of here. They made me. God damn it. Uh, yeah, so we got we to thank uh, Mira for a 33-month resump. Uh, Pedro got some birthday presents from Jill, Arthurin, and Gameotron, yeah, right? I did. Uh, Jill g- got me a Steam gift card. Thank you very much, Jill. Uh, Arthurin and Gameotron got me a couple of games. Nice. Terminator Resistance and uh, B-Man G Drive. Thank you both so very much. I already posted a screenshot of B-Man G Drive. I took the, um, the most hatchbacky looking car over some very rough Drove terrain at full speed. Rock. <laughs> Just I, I, full I mean, speed and it completely tore itself apart. If you buy yes. Pedro a car for his birthday, he will crash it. Uh, we, we got a wish list as well. Head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Mouse of the support button. We have one for Pedro, myself, Ven, and uh, Jill on that Tuesday show that we do or Wednesday show. What am I talking about? I don't know what days of the weeks are. Uh, buy me some, <laughs> buy me some dice, buy me a lot, pull down, buy Pedro uh, some files. Hang on, hang on. I think uh, when it comes to draw, how's that uh, smoke machine doing, buddy? Uh, <laughs> it came with, uh, it came with this thing that looks like a little remote detonator that, uh, okay. <laughs> Well, it is a remote detonator. Not, not so much. Not, not, not so much. Um, I, 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 did not remember to buy propylene glycol in time for the show. Otherwise, <laughs> I would just be a very, very hazy man at the moment. I'm just uh, saying, man, uh, it, it's going to be expensive <laughs> to license the final countdown, so we've got to get it organized. <laughs> I, did, I did not know that lighting control also works over XLR. Uh, the, yeah, yeah which, it, it's not XLR. But it's not It's not XLR, but it's like a similar connector. DIN. DIN? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's still three pins. It's a three-pin DIN connector. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, AKA AES. It's 110 ohms. So I can plug it into my Euphoria and it should work fine, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, do it, but no. Yeah. Um, because, <laughs> we do want to thank each and every one of you yep. for your support. Letting us do this the way we want to do it. Uh, we're not beholden to any advertisers, just you, the audience. Hopefully you like what we do, what we put down. We do a bunch of stuff during the week, up to and including game streams. And can just come check us out. Come say hi. Uh, as always, IRC, wide open. If you want to hang out there, that is tied to our Twitch chat. It's tied to our live chat in Discord so everybody can collaborate. And uh, yeah, let's just keep on seeing what the rest of this year has in store. Because one thing I'm looking forward to token with a Linux stick at some point is the Intel A750. And we finally got some kind of numbers. All right. Does it count if they're Intel benchmarks? Maybe if you squint. Uh, this is from videocards.com. Intel released a video and talking about the A750. You might have seen it this week. Um, Big Ginge and uh, Tom? Yes, Tom Peterson, yeah. formerly Tom. of uh, NVIDIA. Right, Team Green. Uh, <laughs> So uh, they've been doing the tours, man, talking about, hey, this is one we will admit exists, unlike the other one, the A380. You know, like, leave that out. And shh, shh, shh. So Ryan Schrout, to quote Herr Schrout himself, performance results shown here is a small subset of games. Um, I'm not asserting that all games in all caps will show these results. <laughs> Giant, Del- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Intel Benchmarks, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Uh, it's a view of the Arc A series cards are capable with the right software and engineering enablement. Ryan Trout from Intel. So what are we looking at here, Pedro Mateus? <laughs> We're looking at F1 2021, which is a DX12 game. Cyberpunk 2077, which is a DX12 game. Control, which is a DX12 game. Borderlands 3, which is a DX12 game. And Fortnite, which... Could be a DX11 game. Uh, that's also the one that has the lowest margin there, but no, it also has a DX12 mode. So as far as I know, that's all DX12. So <laughs> right, it runs saying, straight on metal too. What right? you're saying is these, ga- these this is a bad example of games made in the last three years. <laughs> it's a very good example of uh, games made in the last three years. It's a really bad example for what most people can expect from their libraries because you probably have a lot of older games that you may want to play. Yeah, Maybe. I mean, I, I mean, and literally all we know about this model so far is that it has a six pin and an eight pin connector power. And yeah, Intel sent some engineers to these uh, game devs and had made, made sure that their shit was optimized. Maybe, for their, maybe we don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, but here, and here's the thing. Like, again, we've, we've been saying it for months, something 3060 ish emphasis on the ish, as Ryan Shrout said, um, for a reasonable price, um, three hundred again, three hundred ish would be super nice. Isn't if Intel isn't fuzzing these numbers again because you know they've been I mean, known to okay. misrepresent a, a benchmark or two in their day. Yeah, I mean, hopefully this doesn't have a water chiller hooked up to it. Uh, um, so 
Let's take a look at this. Uh, the reason we want to bring up, uh, just you really want to squint at the benchmark because these are not FPS numbers. These are 1.17x, 1.15x, and 114, 113, 110. The fuck's that really supposed to be? However, they do say testing was performed at 1440p uh, using high settings. Intel's GPU delivered 13% performance on average, geometric mean, with a lead ranging from about 6% in Fortnite to as much as 17%. And F1 2021 from Codemasters, which those games fucking run splendidly on goddamn everything. Um, except Cyberpunk. Except, all right. But, I mean, come on. That's hard mode for anything. <laughs> that's hard mode for I me, I have to man. put the disclaimer I'm, there. <laughs> I mean, it's Cyberpunk. You do a victory lap if you get to say run. Uh, yeah. Now, the MSRP for the 3060, I went look because this is supposed to be competing with the 3060. It really is. Uh, that's what they benched it against. That's what Intel wants to think. Uh, the MSRP for the 3060 initially was 329 which the dark days are over because I was able to get a 3060 for uh, 360 I was that's, like, ooh. That's like a, a dollar per 30. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and prices are falling because if you've been following the news, Intel's got a lot of leased out fab space with um, Samsung. Or no, TSMC. TSMC. And uh, they got to dump that. Video card prices, even on Amazon, you can buy one of the little mini 3060s for like 340 bucks on Amazon, which you're going to be paying the iron price for there. So it's getting closer to that initial MSRP that we were promised way back when at the 3060 launch. So this kind of tangles with that. Um, I think maybe if the 570 is sub 300, sub 300, we're talking like a max, like maybe 275, 280. It might find an audience, but they got to do it. They got to get it out quick because we can all agree this should have six months ago. We would have a different conversation right now. Oh, yeah. We, However, we have the, at this point, the 40, 40, 4,000 series and the 7,000 series are right around the corner. So right. Like, yeah. This is what Later I put in years, the notes. <laughs> Any interest in this card immediately go. NVIDIA just has to walk out and go make an announcement here in Q3. Be like, yeah, 46 is coming out at the end of Q4. Then we'll fuck. <laughs> Because everyone's just going to wait on the 4060. Yeah. yeah. And uh, those numbers, I mean, they don't look completely off because, like I mentioned, they're all DirectX 12 titles and they probably tested them all in DirectX 12. And if you saw the Gamers Nexus review of the A380, it, the Intel cards did very good in um, DX12. It was when it came to DX11, DX9, and OpenGL. Those, they, it, they were very reliant on resizable bar. One, one, yeah, one thing they did test both and yes uh, the when you enable resizable bar on the intel gpus you effectively have to be able to do something yeah. to even make it usable. you have to enable it in order to get any kind of noticeable performance and one, uh go ahead i was just gonna say one one one, one thing that pops into my mind uh, immediately about like the just about the 4000 series specifically is we know that they're going to be cutting the uh, memory on a lot of the lower end models so I don't know. Yes. Maybe maybe maybe, um, maybe there's a way Intel can say like, well, hey, yeah, the, that forty sixty is out, but you know, we are that only comes with eight gigs. We have we have twelve gigs. You know. Well, it's kind of weird because you know, and in, not Intel, but Nvidia has been making it a point to give that Rambos to all their cards lately. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they're yeah. going from eight to like all of those variants have a twelve gig now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. the good thing about it be about the Intel cards being so uh, well, I guess uh, <laughs> mediocre with uh, the DX12 and Vulcan um, numbers, mm -hmm. not so much with the previous um, APIs, is that everything that runs on DX9, DX10, DX11, even DX12 uh, on Linux runs Vulcan. So. Maybe, maybe on Linux, this will be a passable GPU. We'll I mean, have I, I, to see. You know what? <laughs> Except for that 90% of your library that uses OpenGL. Yeah. Yes. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. And like, <laughs> may, may, maybe we can see some like extended stuff for Mesa with ACO on Intel. Like, there, there, there's a lot of stuff that can happen once the card is out in people's hands and people or, can start uh, fucking around with Google's, it. Or use Google's, what's it called? The thing that translates uh, OpenGL to Vulkan. Angle? YOLO. Angle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I mean, like, there, there, there's there's all sorts of possibilities out there, but again, it, it boils down to people need to have the card in hand in order to actually expose yes. the, the, the functionality. We gotta there. see. We gotta see. It's hard to get excited about this. Uh, part of me is still excited about this because they have come out and said, yes, this is going to have AV1 hardware and it's going to be there Zinc. at launch. Sorry, not Angle. And um, that could be interesting Zinc. for different reasons, but uh, we just gotta wait and see. I mean, the numbers, 
looking at this, this is their mid-range for the, you know, A-series, the Alchemist. And, you know, they're going to be doing Alchemist, Battle Mage, I don't know, Cheddar Druid. Cheese, whatever the third one is. Yeah. Archangel. Yeah. Spawn, <laughs> the Crow. The crow. Um, Cthulhu. Should, yeah. Um, yeah. That'd be, oh, <laughs> Intel, you should have had, like, the B, it should have been Bunny Suit, man. Bring, bring those guys back. That would have been fun. <laughs> so, they, they, they start naming their cards after, like, Guar members. Come yeah. on. Come on. You you would buy a I would buy one I, if you had a core special edition. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. It like spews goo at you. 100%. Or if it was officially licensed for. Yeah. All right. Yeah, um, yeah, the, the, the odorous ungus are. I guess we should say <laughs> the looks. Uh, it's dual axial and it's got a little thin RGB at the front and it's got some recessed RGBs in the fan holes. Nothing really offensive. Hopefully there's an off switch for that shit. But <laughs> don't worry, that'll probably be like a partner model uh, with all of the RGBs. Like the entire shroud is RGB. <laughs> Who knows? Give us some kitty cat ears. Good news, everyone. Um, Unity. Unity is working a very, very tight Never. rope right now. <laughs> The yeah no it's been nothing but uh, really really iffy news coming out of Unity recently. Uh, they had like some uh, good news with their uh, like new version release, but then then they decided you know what we're just going to merge with Iron Source. Who's Iron Source? You wonder. You're wondering. Well, they ex uh, they sort of focus and their expertise is on uh, monetization, aggressive monetization you could even call them malicious in their uh monetization because they've literally made uh adware the the kind that latches itself to installers if you ever downloaded a windows setup thing and it came with like the ask toolbar or something like that that is the kind of stuff that iron source does there's uh, there's a there's a very big break with them uh then added it to the show notes that like goes yes. in super huge detail about like what they actually do to to like click jack people with like crazy levels of search engine optimization to redirect people to random file servers that appear to be legitimate ones that you know will ship you a chrome installer with a bunch of you know random shit installed in it right yep it is it is exactly that kind of company, and that is the company that the fine uh, uh, leadership at Unity, John Ricciatello, decided, you know what, it's really good to get in bed with these people, so let's do it. And uh, yeah, no, it's... When I learned a few years ago that John Ricciatello, former uh, CEO of Electronic Arts, was the CEO of Unity, I'm, I was thinking, okay... But Unity's actually been doing okay, and there's a lot of great people that work for it. So, and the engine itself uh, being one of the leading ones with Linux support, it's like, can't be that bad, right? That's, this is when the other shoe drops, because uh, greed above all, so it would seem. <laughs> well, listen, you're not trying to make money. I mean, uh, the lion's share of profit Unity makes is from its adver adver They have their own advertising yes. company, effectively, <laughs> from Unity. How many people have went through and uh, added all of the uh, Unity bits to your pie hole for telemetry? Because <laughs> that's on by default. I mean, this is not terribly like shocking to me, but yeah, it, it is that iron source, which I'm like, I've heard that name before. And yeah, they distribute, I'll go ahead and say it, like malware, adware bundlers just are just nasty and bad. All the links to everything we're talking about, it's going to be in the show notes, but I do want to point out this. They didn't buy Iron Source. They merged with them. You look at the numbers with the stock option put together. This is they're creating this new entity that just happens to, to still be called Unity. Yeah, it, 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 and like like you said, doubling down on ads as a business seems to make seems to be a logical move, move for Unity. Most of the games that come out via Unity are mobile games. Like um, uh, stuff for iOS and Android are mm -hmm. a huge are a huge segment of uh, Unity's monetization, and you know Matt considering they slashed their platforms. engineering division, <laughs> yeah, considering yeah they re they recently just slashed their engineering division, <sighs> yeah maybe they uh, maybe they need some uh, more capital, but you know messaging here is very pissed for, especially because Rich Tello is coming out and being like, yo, if you're not designing monetization into your game from Genesis, you are a 
verbatim quote fucking, fucking idiot, idiot. <laughs> which you, you know i mean maybe maybe the plan here is to tank the video game side by just creating as much negative will towards the company as possible and then just go all in on adverts Seriously, i don't think someone that's already actually the tell case. them the someone people needs to building tell them the game yeah, already exists be shipping them. <laughs> here's the thing though like what fraction of one half of one percent even know what a fucking game engine is <laughs> yeah you know the answer to that that's why you're being quiet <laughs> a lot of yeah the, uh, the moment you step outside of our circle yep. uh, not a lot of people know what the hell an especially on a video game is right <laughs> but you know they're they're not the ones who are actually making it that's the i'm just saying yeah. it's a dick move uh, yep. but i understand why they're focusing on that plus they sunk all that money into getting weta yeah because they, they, they're they were hoping to get break into hollywood that didn't happen and it's, this is interesting timing i mean i you know I, i've seen people talk like, well, we're thinking about switching engines. People say they're going to do stuff all the time. We'll see. Uh, UE5 is getting a lot more attractive, is all I'll yep. say. And Godot, mm-hmm. I know somebody's going to run out and say Godot. That's not always the best solution. I mean, if you're working for PC, but I've already talked to a couple of people like, hey, what's your reasons hanging on? Two things keep coming up. And it's just one thing, really. Nintendo Switch and anything else, that's not a PC. Like yep. Unity's proven there. We got the things. Plus, I've had another person say they need a better asset store, which <laughs> I would argue maybe not. Some original Probably assets. not the best argument, but it is the um, actual argument. You, that yeah, I, I, all right. I can think from a developer says, so like, listen, I just need some good fucking looking trees, Pedro Mateus. God damn. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean good, good, good looking trees. Always, and those shaders that were compiled for DX9 that run like ass on anything current. Yes. Listen, if you if you need better trees, you should just look at Lumberyard as an engine, clearly. <laughs> um, no. If you want to, your trees to look their best and they're DX9, you might want to run them through DXVK. Well, maybe. Wait, uh, but damn, that's the next one. That, that's, one. That's, that's the next one. We, we got to talk about See, acid I wanted that segment segue to go so smooth. I made it happen. <laughs> but no, you're right. You're right. You're right. <sighs> Delisting old games. Um, Unity wasn't the only company to do all. What the fuck? Uh, this yeah. week, no, 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 not to be outdone. I have to find, find lovely people at uh, Ubisoft. We're like, hey, you know what? We can fuck things up too. Uh, so this is from VG247.com, and this talks about, you know, if publishers are going to delist games, it should be a law that, you know, we should be able to just get them, right? We should be like, hey, it's abandoned where? That's where it goes. And hey, here's where I'm at with that. If you want to pull your game from sale, uh, morally, I don't have an issue with people yarring the hell out of it. However, I can respect the right that it is your game. You get to decide whether or not you would like to sell it. I understand that intellectually. That said, uh, what happened here is like a very classic move. I saw some people doing victory laps over this. Now, which Assassin's Creed was it? Um, It was... uh, It was like the... (sighs) Unity, liberation, liberation, liberation. This week, <laughs> yeah. or it might have been late last week. They had a little thing on the Steam stores. This is we're pulled from the store. It's no longer available for purchase, and it said on the store, "Hey, you're not going to be able to play this anymore, no matter if you own it." Which wasn't necessarily true, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. This was masterfully handled by Ubisoft because over the weekend, everyone went. Ah, we're not going to be able to play this game. Boo! Ah, we're not going to be able to play this game. And Ubisoft walks up Monday and goes, no, 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 you're just not going to be able to buy it. You can still play it. And the internet does a victory lap saying, we did it, internet. This is- <laughs> we, did, just- we did it, Reddit. Yeah. <laughs> the Ubisoft got the internet to thank them for delisting a game on Steam. Well played, Ubisoft. Yeah. yeah the, no, the, the, the major thing was that... Uh, People misunderstood the little message that showed up on the Steam store saying, yeah, you won't be able to keep playing it at all. Because it said you wouldn't be able to keep playing yeah. it at all. <laughs> uh, but no, it's not the entire game. You'll still be able to play the base game. You just probably won't have access to the online D, uh, the online DRM server, which uh, lets you play the DLC that you already paid for. That's the scummy thing that they did there. Uh, the uh, it, Well, I mean, it, it tying is- your DLC... In any way, shape, form, or fashion, to an online service. I mean, yeah. but that, that, it, it that's, is that's, that's long term monetization, it, it, right? It, yeah, it, it is the level of scum that uh, we can expect for Ubisoft, and then pulling that and uh, just having people straight up say, okay, I'm going to pirate your game then. Because from the start, Ubisoft has been the one that has 
cocked up DRM so bad that they've hurt the paying customer more than the people who always pirated their games. I don't know. It, who came up with that Starforce DRM? <laughs> Starforce? The other one that was like a rootkit before we had rootkits. Oh, the, the oh. Sony one? Sekirum? Yeah, or? I just I, I just want to make like reigning champion. I don't think Ubisoft's <laughs> got the title. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yeah. uh, there's also the current... Uh, brand of uh, anti-cheat for multiplayer games that runs at kernel level well i, I mean here, here 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 here's the thing yeah this this <laughs> wasn't this wasn't great communication it's too it's super scummy uh people should be able to absolutely you know play the games that they purchased yeah. uh but i mean that's here, what here, this but, article but, is about but so, but here's the thing. I bet, I bet you dollars to donuts in maybe one or two years, we're gonna see a, a compilation of Assassin's Creed greatest hits. Maybe, maybe, maybe Liberation HD will be a remaster. But, but you loved it so much. Did. Buy it again. Did. Yes. Buy it again, <laughs> no, but no, with no. bonus <laughs> NFTs. Bonus <laughs> NFTs. Jordan. Um. But everyone, <laughs> right? Why are you booing me? You all clap when Nintendo does it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, Rockstar did it. They got booed. Ubisoft is doing it. They got booed. Nintendo does it. Oh, yes, please, Nintendo, uh, more. Here's the thing. Down Nintendo, my back, Nintendo's please. got its customer base. <laughs> As somebody thinking about buying a fucking Switch, I realize the ecosystem walking, too. They got that fucking user base oh, trained. They it's, it's, it's some a, shit. It's they a get steel applause. Trap. Yeah. like, yay, we get to play this thing. From oh, my God. A, n- a new Metroid game. It's again that guy, that dude, fucking spent forty thousand dollars to buy enough Nintendo uh-huh. shares to go to a shareholder meeting and ask, "When's the new F Zero coming out, man? I really want to play some oh, Captain man. Falcon." So, yeah, what, what do we think about old games? I mean, um, you know, it would be nice to live in this fantasy world where you know I've said, um, "What Heretic Two? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you want to talk old uh, games? Uh, oh, look, a Heretic purchase. <laughs> well, okay, Pedro, let me put it this way: nineteen ninety-seven. How, how about a game from ten years ago that doesn't have a physical version and never did? Yeah, then you're on topic with the story we're talking screwed. about. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you're basically you have to rely on those piracy, piracy and uh, abandonware websites because or, you can't. Or engine much like this one, uh, if it weren't for the physical edition, you can't buy this online anywhere because it's currently an IP hell. It, yeah, <laughs> and, and and again. I, I loathe as I am to say it, EA fucking figured it out when they went to the open RA guys and said like, oh, hey, you figured out how this game works. Do you want to take ownership of this? Mm-hmm. We'll still yeah. sell it and make all the money <laughs> off it, but you can still, but you can maintain it. And- Basically what you're left with is hoping that it's on GOG. Yep. Yeah. It's on it's GOG just- or someone has uploaded it to the archive.org. Yeah. Str- Strider has a good point. Support archive.org. It's they're, yeah, they're, they're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> yep. Indeed. Now, let's talk about some Dix Vix. Oh, yes. New version. Uh, thank you very, very much, Deutschen. Uh, version 1.10.2 uh, has been released. You can get it right now. Or if you're running the uh, bleeding edge of the Proton Experimental branch, you already have this. And it does, it comes with a few uh, bug fixes, like an issue for the. D three D eleven sampler anisotrop anis at anis anis anisotropic filtering you anisotropic, it up so hard. I, yes. I was going to try to help you out and I couldn't even get it out man I'm like nope that works anisotropic dead to you. okay. There we go. A- 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 um, asshole tropic filtering. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Asshole tropic filtering. Uh, the, Don't even uh, waste your time. <laughs> they fixed Shut building up. on uh, GCC 12.1. And the one that stuck out to me, they fixed the bug for limbo. Yes. That limbo. Uh, What was the bug? It's basically if you have like, you know, fancy new system, the game probably runs at a heck of a lot more than 60 FPS. So uh, when you get to the end of the game, you can actually finish it because once you like cracked through the glass to get to the end, the game would just freeze and not let you actually see the ending. So the fix of that was too limited to 60 FPS. It's not by any means a DXVK problem, but they decided, well, we can just make the default to limit the FERPs for Limbo uh, at 60 FPS. Now, I think the big warning I wanted to give everyone with this, this is going to be the last one that's going to work with your retro NVIDIA GPUs. And uh, because, let's see, what is this? Yeah, you're going to need 5X series minimum your nvidia drivers going forward you got to keep that in mind and you know i I get it uh i'm not happy about that because uh long-term production is 495 right now and that's what i'm going to be running 
So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dreading the day when I got to switch to the legacy drivers for this 1080 Ti. That's not mm-hmm. going to be great. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, you know, I run the production. Well, Nvidia's got a very confusing way of how they list their drivers. They're yes. like latest features branch, which is the production, the ones that you want to run, and the um, other ones not beta, the main line, whatever, Short which are the five X. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I installed those. I mean, they do work. Nothing exploded immediately, but yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, and, and if you want to play with this right now and you don't want to do any extra legwork, use Proton Experimental and just put that in more expensive, experimental mode. Yes. In the, uh, <laughs> more, more experimental-er mode. Er, er. Er, I'd er, have er, a er. lot of respect if they just had the er, er. Alex, Alex, experimental er. Experimental er. Yeah, er, er. Down, just yeah no, er. you, you just have like different <laughs> levels for like bleeding edges. Er, 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 er. <laughs> experimental arrest ah, right. experimental right, let's, with lisp yeah let's talk about programming in lisp that's lisp that's what things that people do these days right I well mean, yeah. i mean yeah if you're <laughs> if you're the developer of uh, candria uh then yes you developed an entire 2d game in lisp uh yeah and uh there's actually an entire engine develop uh devoted to it it's called the trial engine which is really more of a collection of utilities for making a game but nonetheless, uh, that we're not here to talk about trial. We're here to talk about Candria. This is a fun little blog post where um, this person goes and um, discusses basically at a very high level of detail or very in-depth uh, level of detail uh, how he goes about writing a game engine in Lisp, handling uh, GL inputs uh, or GL buffers inputs all in Lisp. Could you run this game in Emacs? Maybe I, 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 don't, I don't know. Um, I will say though that Lisp isn't a super common language for game dev, but hey, it is a language that you can make games in, and people are doing it. So more resource, the more resources available for this, the better. You know, you're you're, you're giving people options. Maybe Java doesn't work for them. Maybe Lisp does. Maybe Python does. Maybe Unity or C or Godot or what whatever, right? But the po- the point is there there is a use case that matches what you want to do, and maybe this is this is for you. So uh, if you are uh, dabbling in Lisp or maybe want to get into some game development with a very unique language, not a, not a lot of other languages have Lisp ish syntax, and people who like it really like it. So yeah, here's, here's um, the level editor yeah, done in I mean, Lisp. I mean, if yeah. you're just like you know what uh, C sharp two mainstream bro. Uh, <laughs> This to do it. I mean, they got a Kickstarter campaign. What's that about? Uh, the uh, the Kickstarter campaign finished because the game's already on Steam. Oh, good on them. Yeah, it finished up. Uh, neat. That was back in uh back in yep. the twenty two. Is in the November of twenty two. Wait, no, that's the delivery. Cool. Yes, yeah. that's when it's coming. <laughs> well, I mean, it looks the part, right? Yep. Right in the little game. It, it, it is on. That, it, it is on Steam. You can. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's got a demo. Wait, does it have a Linux demo? Yes, I'm I'm aware of the entire family of Lisp languages, Strider, but does we're not have a Linux demo. <laughs> no. uh, yeah. Oh man, it requires Linux three thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. This, this thing Someone's runs working on with uh, Cent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cent seven. seven. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's it's very 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 conservative system requirements. You don't need. <laughs> you know what? You know what? If you get bored doing that, you can run DaVinci Resolve on that because that. Yeah. Thing, yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, there, there you go. Coming up next, real fake racing for real. J- Please just tell me it's fake. It's not a fakie. It's a truey. It's the chairquisition. It's where we take a game and run it on three different computers running three different Linux distributions. And then we tell you, based on our highly scientific Game Boy powered lawn chair metrics, whether it was good or not, one chair means that it's garbage, four chairs means that it's Fucking amazing. This week, we're taking a look at Fake Racing by Roman Shivalikov. Down on the Unity engine, you can pick it up for about 10 bucks. What is it? A retro-style indie racing game with a monochrome pixel graphics and a fake car physics. Features air attack and elimination modes. And we got to thank Roman for sending us Thank you, keys. Roman. I hope you're not related to Mikhail Shivlikov, because if we should talk your game, he will come and break us in half. Then, well, how does this game work on uh, Debian? Oh, you, you left out the most important part. We got a challenge mode. We got to finish each and every one of our little talks in under three minutes, or we just get I muted. I don't think that's going to be a problem here. But oh, come on. How dare you? How dare you? A smirch. That's wonderful. Uh, all right. Oh, hang oops. on. I forgot to say Spoilers. That. <laughs> all right three minutes uh, working on it man working on it I, i'll not fix it in post this is how we roll this all right there we go 
Uh, Debian 11 Threadripper 1920X. NVIDIA 3060. This thing launched out of the box. Xbox controller detected. Positive signs. Windowed in full screen. Happy to see that. Field of view slider. Well played. Very, very high expectations. Uh, then I got the assertion failed pop-up box. Uh, that <laughs> generated correctly. It, it was a rectangle with a functioning OK button after the game spite crash to the desktop. It is OpenGL, I mean, if you're wondering. But yeah, let's talk about the fun. That's the, the real fake racing. You know, I rolled in this game not knowing what to expect because you never know. Uh, a game titled Fake Racing has a bit of wiggle room. Like, what are we going for here? Is this subversive or anything like that? So I smashed the go button, uh, hit the second turn, flew off into the bushes, and uh, said to myself, well, look at this. This is an attempt at simulation physics. Okay. No, like, that's how we're going to play this. I can roll with it. I went into the control menu, looked for the handbrake, looked for the gear selection, found a handbrake, no gear selection. Ouch. Uh, so, you know what? I guess I was just going to suss things out using the speedometer and the brake and the handbrake. Right. Unfortunately, the speedo was unnumbered as well. So it's kind of like a suggestion meter. You can't really see those digital numbers. Like, what speed do I need to be at for this to make the handbrake turn and make all that work correctly? Guess, last last resort, I can probably get around this using the overhead map. That doesn't exist while you're playing. And you know what? You might think, you might think that having a chopper flying about, dropping shit in your way, would make up for the lack of gear selection, overhead maps, and number digits on the speedo. It fucking doesn't. Fake racing might make sense in VR, but I doubt it. I just don't see what we're going for with this. This comes across to me as, hey man, I got a nice little tech demo, if you want to call it a tech demo, a nice little fuck around simulator, but this isn't a game. There's not enough here for a game. I mean, you have collisions with the cars, that's it, and whatever the uh, chopper poops out but not the trees and you can just drive off to infinity and all that somebody uh you know you found a neat shader like ah it makes it look like that and i'm like that's novel for about 30 fucking seconds so there's nothing malicious about this game uh it's not terribly bad it's vr supported if that's your thing i went to the forums and i read and i didn't see anything nobody blowing it up saying it was amazing so if you got vr try it out i wish there was a demo but if there was a demo it there's only a very little bit to play, man. Maybe check it out. I don't know. Uh, the retro just doesn't sell it for me. All right. Well, on Fedora 35, 64-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, this game brought my system to its knees. No, it launched out of the box. I only got one crash so far just as I was going to finish a race because there's too many objects, apparently. Also, oh boy, the the handling is real garbo. It's some real fake physics here, the capital PH. Uh, Monochrome visuals are neat until you try all the different tracks and then you realize they all kind of look the same. It has VR support if those of you, for those of you who are interested in experiencing life in an original Game Boy. And, you know, there is some music in the menu, but in the game, it's just vroom vroom. So, gameplay-wise, fun-wise, what you have is a pretty bare-bones racing game with no multiplayer, bad handling, and a striking but highly samey visual aesthetic. So, you know, there's stuff to unlock. you got to complete the tournament if you want to unlock the last track on the list, or if you want to get the other car, which has no other benefit beyond looking slightly different. Um, and I really couldn't give you a compelling reason to go through that for either of those goals. Uh, there's also a mode where an Apache helicopter hovers above you and fires missiles at you that nudge you slightly. I have no idea what that it's about, but considering that is the default option on the first menu item in the game, I assume that is the intended gameplay mode. Uh, there is a tournament as well. I tried to do that. Those cars drive way too fucking perfectly. Way too good for a scrub like me to even stand a chance. And Pedro, who like plays racing games, as you can see, is uh, not doing so well. So, you know... I don't know. You can slow things down. They give you an option to to like slow down the, the, the race, which I thought might help with the handling, but you just end up just flying off the map in slow motion. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I could honestly recommend this game. Uh, I'm going to give it one chair. It's not fun. It's not like lazily done or anything, but like it's just not entertaining. It, it's a good student project. Yeah. It was definitely a good first attempt at a game. 
not entirely sure it's worth the price, but before we get to that, uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the um, Radeon RX 6700 XT, it launched out of the box. Um, and uh, I tried it on the deck too, because I have to. Uh, I have a Steam Deck, so I have to try the games on the deck. And it launched out of the box there too. It V-Syncs appropriately, like most Unity games. Uh, the controls are fairly simple. It's the WASD uh, or the controller if you really care to uh, use it. There is a little bit of music in the menu, like Jordan mentioned, but not in-game proper. Graphics-wise, it doesn't look all that demanding, right? I mean, if you're looking at the video version, that it, it does that fake dithering to emulate a two-bit color scheme, like your OG Game Boy type of situation. Um, and it's, yeah, no, that doesn't really use a lot of the GPU or the CPU. Why would it? Right up until you decide to capture it. Uh, there's an option in the menu that disables the uh, per pixel dithering uh, and makes it smoother, which reduces the amount of bitrate necessary to actually capture the game uh, with, say, the X264, um, which uses uh, which is a CPU uh, based capture, it's software mode capture. Uh, and no matter what I did, I could not use X264 because uh, OBS kept complaining. No, sorry, the encoder is um, overloaded. Please uh, reduce the settings or uh, choose a different capture method. Okay, uh, I guess we're bringing in VA API and I'm using the 6700 XT to do it because I could not do it on the CPU. So this graphical behemoth was causing an encoder overload on my Ryzen 7 3700 XT. Kudos. Uh, but as for the fun, you know, outside of that particular bit of fun, I tried to find it. I, I genuinely did. Um... I, I, th I thought this was going to be like a Soda Drinker Pro or a Glitter Mitten Grove type of situation. I could not find Vivian Clark. If it is there, I can find it, and looking on the Steam forums, no one could find it there either. Uh, so all that you're left with is a racing game where you're not actually racing cars, but trains. They look like cars, and they drive off-road, but they're trains. There's an infinite speed boost uh, if you go downhill, and much like a train, your car can't go uphill past a certain incline. The trees are not solid, and the CPU cars are on a fixed track. Uh, if something does knock them off course slightly, they will brute force their way back to the course that they were preset to. Uh, as much as I didn't like Art of Rally or Absolute Drift, those games really do set the benchmark of what a one-person studio can do when it comes to racing video games. Fake racing, unfortunately, is not very good. It, uh, the aesthetic was striking, that's what actually got me curious about the game, but it is not a very good racing game. One chair. <laughs> well, there you go. Fake racing is a bit of... It's not It's not a fake game, but it is fake fun. Um, it is. I mean, we were all sitting back. I, I think, like, maybe there's some, like, something like Frog Fractions. Is this Frog Fractions 3? <laughs> yeah, no. Is, is this Vivian Clark? Is this Frog Fractions 3? It's like, w gimme. <laughs> no, it's not. Maybe it is. You know what? We'll we'll be the first retraction if we get an email. <laughs> yeah. of like <laughs> by the, the developer way. comes in, like go here specifically. Mm. Go here. Yeah. Oh. De 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 decompile okay. the binary, and you'll find <laughs> another game in there that is the actual game. No, like I, I I don't know. Do you do you here? And here here's the thing. Do you think multiplayer would help if be no. No, not not um, not all. No, 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 uh, not, 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 e not even for gits and shiggles. I mean, there's like weird things. Uh, things that bug me maybe it shouldn't is i don't like that there's a collision detection with the cars and not the environment outside yeah, of like, the trees are just yeah. not solid the, the fact that there's like a limbo that you can drive and explore but like there's no point to it beyond like yeah you're does airtime exist in this game uh no uh, the the cars are stuck, uh, that, stuck they're trains the, they, yeah. they are like Extremely you, heavy, very, very quick, but they have zero torque. <laughs> That's why you, Turbo you, Train you never this, took off. <laughs> you, you choose this as your game of the year, Pedro? Uh, <laughs> no. This, uh, I, I want to say there's got to be a level of something that maybe sets us apart in VR. But again, I went through the forum and I looked at that and I looked at some YouTube videos online and, and I just wasn't seeing it. It's not like I tried to I find mean, the fun. I could not. The, the, the missiles like don't even take out your car. They don't do anything. They're like minor inconvenience. They're, they're irritation. Yeah, they, they slow you down a little bit. 
Yeah. That, that's yeah. it. That's all they do. But I, I, God I damn. guess in a, in a neck mean, and neck race. That's, you know what? When you're annoying. design documents, like <laughs> simulation with <laughs> helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> attack helicopter simulation on a racing game uh, <laughs> done uh, next well all right speaking of next coming up uh we're gonna talk about some demos and maybe maybe a slight change to the check position format i don't know we'll oh. find out not gonna go there but hey uh it's the end of the show oh uh, dude do you think on- we could do like i'm a jersey girl in a jersey. <laughs> we we need we need Kevin Smith Aqua. for that though. I'm a Jersey girl in a Jersey world. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez. I don't know what rhymes with Jennifer Lopez. I do, but I'm not saying shit. That one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, a, I'm what's, what's I'm not the no ben button. Stiller's, uh, I want the no button. No, ben Affleck's divorce is already goddamn <laughs> <laughs> But yes, uh, chesses are during the show. We've had uh, more than one moment like this. Well, not exactly like this, but you get the picture. Uh, is is we... this episode as good or better than Jersey Girl? Tell us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can absolutely tell us. Uh, you can tell me what Jersey Girl is because I don't live in North America. Um, you can go to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the, I can sort of kind of guess it from the name, but you know, uh, click the contact button. There's a form you got to fill at the bottom. There's some caveats you should absolutely read before you get to the form. But if you don't want it, well, you do so at your own uh, peril. LGC Weekly is the show that you want to send your hate mail to. Otherwise, well, we, we may be misinclined to just make fun of you instead. How's that? Mm-mm. <laughs> Misinclined. I'm special. Yes. I'm just gonna at replay you once on Twitter. <laughs> and just, just just say quote tweet. That yeah. may work sometimes. Yeah. Uh well, better better chance of... Yes. Gone, where is it? No, it's too late, man. The moment's gone. All right. Well, you know what? Our Theron has a moment because he sent us an email. Uh and he's talking about the Steam demos extravaganza, and he says, Hello there. Uh, with the Steam Next Fest thingamabob, would it be possible? Whoa, to whoa, spend- whoa! We better back down on this technical talk. What's the uh, <laughs> thingamabob? Well, it's it, it, it's, it's it's a thing and a mabob at the same time. It's a th- uh, like think of a thingamajig, uh, but it's nothing like that. But if it was like a mcbob, that would McDonald's would sue somebody, wouldn't they? Probably, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, unless unless your name is Mick Robert, in which case, then your name is Mick Bob. Anywho, um, uh, yeah. Would it be possible to have a special chairquisition or show segment that would have each one of you talking about a demo that interests you? It could bring out some exposure for the game, and it would also let us judge your taste in games. Win win in my book. With some love and a sprinkle of hit, Arthur. I don't know. Could be a good idea. I wouldn't be entirely opposed to that. <laughs> Mayhaps. Yeah. Well, there, there you go. A very <laughs> middle answer from Linux. Game we have put a pin on it. <laughs> we we have acknowledged that you've asked us a question. It, it's, Stay tuned it, for the committee. Right. I immediately <laughs> go to like how to, uh, see. <laughs> Can you do it in under three minutes? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so sure. we each uh, play a game. We each record our own gameplay. It's like three different demos. <laughs> We basically uh, crib the like escape is three minute review. Yeah, I mean we got we got Plage Marismo right there, so you know we we're covered. <laughs> you can always blame me. Everyone else does. Yeah, can just, can, just can we just like low key like uh, we got green screens? We just do a yellow background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do do our best Yahtzee impressions. Oh just yeah, like, or no, better yet, our worst <laughs> Yahtzee impressions. Um, <laughs> speak really slowly no 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 <laughs> i i'd spend a couple of weeks just like listening to nothing but carl urban as billy butcher <laughs> <laughs> but but see th- th- then you go and fuck yourself because then you just permanently turn into billy butcher <laughs> i i'm willing to risk it man for the art for the art yeah it's committing to the bit uh that's not outside of the aroma con- um you know there's been a couple ideas we might you know, we've always just uh, stuck with the Jericho because it's something nobody else can get away with doing. Because if you look like our YouTube uh, metrics, to people are like, ah, I don't care, whatever. But it's still important because we do do that for exposure for new and upcoming games and stuff like that. And you never know because occasionally we stumble across really great games and we're some of the first people to ever talk about them before, you know, popular and whatever. And it's a good way to find out whether it runs on Linux nowadays, it runs on the deck. And I feel that's an important 
service. I'm not against mixing it up or, you know, I've always toyed with the idea of, you know, instead of doing the chair acquisition weekly, we do it like monthly and just have like a big blowout, like full end up, like 30 minute chair acquisition. Maybe I, I am not against ideas. I'm not, uh, I also get away with it. Like how much extra work is it going to be? Are we got time scheduling and all that. We've all grown up. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. We've been, we it, 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 turns out, it turns out that like 10 years later, yeah, things change. Yes. <laughs> people, 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 responsibilities and, you know, moving adulting. to different countries. It's, uh, <laughs> uh the, the days are like, Hey, it's three forty eight. Hey, Jordan, we have to, Hey, yeah, I forgot, forgot, forgot to hit the record button. Might as yeah, well do an entire forget, second podcast. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we got time. Yeah. Um, we'll keep it in mind. It has been thought it has been spoken out. So, um, we're always open to suggestions like that too. Things yeah. that you would like to see, uh, I've, I'm always against, and I said this since day one, I'm against changing shit for the sake of change because I've seen too many fucking shows, podcasts, and stuff that have changed shit for the sake of change, and it never works out in the positive. I'm like, oh, we just want to mix things up. I'm like, but that was working. Why did you no. <laughs> I liked what you were doing before. Can we go back, please? <laughs> or it was, even if you're like, well, I'm going cool with that. I'm comfortable. Or I always like to do additive, not subtractive with like... <laughs> Oh, here we'll just patch it up. It's a new thing. So, so, we, so you're saying it's it's a bad idea to delist your stuff from from storefronts? Eh, debate. <laughs> yeah, maybe you know, list new games that people may want to, but leave your old ones for sale just no, in case. That's a horrible idea. <laughs> <sighs> On that incredibly curious business decision, which is another thing I don't fucking understand. We look, of course, it's Ubisoft. You're going to try to fucking <laughs> sell it to people. We know. You looked at Nintendo and went, I want some of that cheddar. Primo shooting in the foot. Yes. <laughs> you can always find me on Twitter. I'm on the Twitter right now. No one uses I still use Twitter. Check it out. I got rid of all the other stuff. I'm just at Vinstone. They're doing my thing. I try to post stuff, keep you updated. What's going on behind the scenes uh, more so in our Discord, on our Patreon, doing that. If you want some of those questions, ask. But we have a Mastodon, mass.livestreamcast.com. I'm Vin on that. Federated timeline. If you want to join, I try to keep a good job keeping the bots and shit out of there. And uh, yeah, come say hi. I'm Jordan Spung, and unfortunately, you know, I'm a little too old. It's it's time that I get delisted from the storefront. But keep your eyes open for Jordan Spung HD with, I don't know, more H and more D. You can get news for that at the Burning Fool on Twitter. Or twitch.tv slash burning fool. I just want to see like foamy pop pop. I guess head out. (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, you'll get absolutely none of the D with me. Uh, No, no, no. you'll have to go back to Jordan for the (laughs) end. Yes, it's all the P. Uh, not that kind. Uh, if you'd like to uh, talk to me, you can absolutely do that on Twitter. I, too, am one of those people that still uses Twitter. At an account at 4, F-O-U-R. Just uh, go there and uh, give me a follow. If you share some interesting stuff, I will follow you right back. That's kind of the uh, He's thing weeing himself as we speak. Credit time. Wee! <laughs> when do you want to go wee? I got drugs yet. <laughs> But I'm gonna still gonna hold on to my little gonads and strife <laughs> in the lightning and in the rain. Well, it's that time of the week again where the credits of varying speed scroll Enjoy past the screen. Enjoy the credits. We These fuckers take like nine minutes to render. Oh yeah, we gotta thank our advisors <laughs> Omega and Arthur and our executive producers. There they are. It's Bob Bram, Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Dora, Marco Haku, George, Pebble, Tomas, and Unoid, and there our little Nick fans. You saw nothing. <laughs> just, just our one little Nicky fan. And these sea monsters. Sea monsters. Ronald, Ryder X Machina, Truggy Verifanuta, Justin Frostclaw, Nub, and David Dirkwing, and System T. With the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chat P, Romeo, Marcin, R- Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresney, Kim, Smashley, Chris, Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.Watt, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, back. Gameatron, Dodger, Zetheris Gaming, <laughs> Rue. And a nice I cannot metric read anymore. It's a little shirlings. too. <laughs> little. Too pixely. <laughs> Come on. Man, if, if only we had like a separate list that we could read off of. It DLSS. Of <laughs> <sighs> oh, Turns man. out we're idiots. Look at yes, these fuckers. Yes, we are. Try to do it live. <laughs> do it in live. It's part of the charm. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's been 10 years. And so seriously, a big thank you to Jill, uh, Gamatron, and Artherin for just all of the wonderful, wonderful Steam gifts. You are truly crazy, but I love you all. Thank you. 
<laughs> don't don't get depressed, birthday. Don't. Just birthday skeleton coming for you. <laughs> that if I everyone. We'll see you next week. Five dudes. <laughs>